Hello, beloveds. Good afternoon. It's your Mystic Journey Divine coming to you with another inspirational video message. Yes. How are you doing on this Friday afternoon? The sun is shining. It's a little cool out. The sun is shining and it's beautiful. Yes. Yes, this is the part two of the first video posted today. Let me love you. I decided that not only do we want to hear messages from the other party, our twin flames and separation, let's find out what spirit has to say about this connection. We know what spirit wants you to do, needs you to do, but what does spirit want to do in this connection? Mm. Sometimes it's not always up to us whether or not we receive, we get to keep a connection, or we're even meant to be in a connection. Often the spirit has their own agenda for our lives. Yes, and our love lives too. <laughs> so let's cleanse our space to the little stage. Come on in. Get your afternoon coffee, your tea, have your lunch. Maybe while you're eating lunch, you're watching Journey. Yes, on your lunch break. Maybe it's your day off if you're lucky you have a three-day weekend. Maybe you're like me and you work from home on your own. Yes, and your morning is spent while watching other readers put out messages that may be resonating with you. Maybe you're a chosen one. Maybe you read tarot, you're a diviner, a psychic, a seer, a healer, a teacher. Yes, and you just love watching these videos because you're interested in what like-minded people have to say. What we're doing out here in the world to take care of the universe and others. Welcome, welcome. If that's you, I'm glad to have you in my vicinity. So as we shuffle the deck, we ask the Spirit to come in, give us messages, and reference to twin flames and separation, or who may be together contemplating separation. Making decisions on whether or not this is the one for them. Should they move? Should they stay? Should they seek more? Or should they do more where they are? Should they give more? Is this truly a soulmate connection? Truly a twin flame connection? Or is it a karmic connection? Only meant to show you what you want and what you don't want. What you'll accept and what you won't accept. Maybe it's meant to help you ascend into the higher self. Because we know that ascension usually comes through the worst of times and through the deepest pain. That pain is meant to ignite us into a new sense of being, a higher elevation of being. To put us in a better place. To show us who we are at our lowest. To teach us who we can be at our best. And highest. To reconnect to God. Who we've forgotten while we enjoy the spoils of this life. Forgetting where our blessings come from. Thinking that we are the masters of all and be all. And we walk around in our ego. Egoic self, we think that we're God, we're goddess, we're the end all be all. And then God strikes you with a mighty blow to let you know, to remind you of who He is and who you are or are not. He sits your ass down and lets you wallow in your pain and regret. And shows you which parts of your life need the most 
correction. If that is you right now and you're going through that, God knows I did. <laughs> and it showed me how I could be so much more, so much better. How it was more important to fulfill my purpose and my destiny here on earth than to seek material things. Things that embodied nothingness, momentary pleasures, pleasures of the flesh and not the spirit. Yes, a healing, a growing season. Teachers sit down and manifest and plant new seeds to grow a new harvest, pure and bountiful. It's time to rake out and take out the trash. Clean up your own backyard and clear out your own closet and get out of the closet. Because surely God sees you no matter where you believe you were hidden, you are not, beloved. It was time to be me, to love me, to own my mistakes and correct my missteps. To remove toxicity from my life and my being. That meant to harm me. To keep me stuck and low. Wishing and wanting and not receiving. Because of the things I was tied to. The toxic people I was tied to. Even as the chosen one. We fall off our journey. In this 3D world, it's easy to get caught up and tied up in that which everyone else is partaking around you, even though you know that you know better, and that you are better, and you have better to give instead of always looking to receive. He taught me to be stronger. To seek that which was higher than myself. To go within. To remember to pray. To be grateful for life and health. And the seeds I sown that I had forgotten to tend to. Because I was too busy as an empath, tending to the seeds of others who didn't appreciate. We're not grateful. We're not reciprocal. Only one to suck my energy dry in hopes to build their own foundations upon mine, which shines so brightly in the sun. Through me, through my words and my gifts of giving. He taught me to pause, beloved. Who are you? Have you forgotten, child of mine, who you are? Why I have brought you here? Why I allow you to breathe and to walk and to speak? Have you forgotten to speak life into your own existence? Thinking that the only way to become was to breathe life into others before yourself? As I watched my towers fall, as I cried for all I thought I was losing, as I grew sick in abandonment and loneliness, The sun rose in my favor. And the wheels of fortune turned in my favor. Because I remembered 
my mother, father, God, and who I came from. Not my earthly parents, but my holy, benevolent ancestors and family of the highest cosmic light. My true spirit guides, they walked with me and talked with me and pushed me every day to get up and to heal and to let my tears turn ashes that I could mold into clay, harden into stone and rebuild a foundation built strong. And I became new. And I'm here now for you and for others who are going through that which I have now rose like the phoenix of the ashes. Turn into a beautiful butterfly who wakes up happy and joyful knowing that I manifest my world and I'm the master of my destiny and this is my queendom. And I will only allow those in who will support me in my path and my journey to righteousness. Who will help elevate me and lift me up and cheerlead my victories. And know that I do not stand against them in competition. That my presence is not a challenge. Who's those that my light doesn't affect the demons. And they fell away. <laughs> Happy. Sorry for my strike. My dog. One of my guy in the lights. Hush. Baby. If that is you, beloved. It is time for you to find yourself again. It's time for you to know that you are a son, a daughter of the master of all creation of the world. And you can have anything your pure heart desires. If you choose to walk in your highest Elevation of light and love. You should go without nothing. And no one that deserves to stand in your sacred space. Wipe away the tears. Put away the anger and resentment for those that came against you. For they know not who you are or who you were. And it's okay to start over from the beginning and build a better, bigger, and stronger to set healthy boundaries and receive new love, new connections, new harvest. The veil is thin. It is October and the veil is thin, thin between the spirit world in the world we live in. A chance for you to cross over in the living. To receive the strength of your mighty ancestors who have passed on. Who asked for that which you need. To be able to talk to them in a closer more intimate way. Light a candle. Burn some sage. Buy some clear quartz crystals. Put out a plate, a dish of water, holy water. Tap in, anoint yourself. Create a daily ritual a weekly ritual, a nightly ritual, a morning ritual to start your day. Ask for guidance, ask for forgiveness, 
Ask for healing. Ask for strength to get over this season of lack, fear, doubt, loneliness, abandonment. Ask for your five of wands to be turned into your nine of cups. Yes. And watch miracles happen in your life. Come from a place of righteousness and purity and innocence. When you speak, when you kneel, when you pray, earn it. Elevate higher. Earn it. And then sit and wait in stillness. Knowing that it is on the way. And you are becoming beautiful inside and out. And the vibration that you send off into the universe will be matched equally in this new season winter shall come and go and spring shall burst into beauty of abundance of beautiful colors and fruits and seeds plentiful for you partake of that which you have manifested and your world will be renewed in hope will return and love will return and joy will return you will be happy once again new friends <sighs> new friends yes new connections so, part two of that first video, we know what happened. The card said what happened. We know what is desired by hearts, if not yours, another. But let's see what spirit has prepared for this connection. Will it go on? Is it meant to be? Should you wait? Should you move on? Should you not wait? Should you? Yes, you should forgive always. If not for them, for yourself. Forgiveness is the gift you give yourself. It manifests. Positivity. Newness. Tranquility. So if you haven't forgiven yourself, forgive yourself, beloved. We all make mistakes. We are not perfect. We are walking in human flesh. Forgive yourself and move on and manifest better for yourself. You learned your lessons. You know what not to do. You know what to do, what to accept. You know what to give and what to receive. Have faith in the new you that's emerging. First cow is one. Oh, and by the way, I'm using the Twin Flame Oracle deck. First cow represents the number 11. Hmm. Now we know November is coming. It's the 11th month of the year. Possibly whatever the cards are saying is coming sooner than you think. You may be born on the 11th of a month. If November 11th is your birthday, mm, it's a powerful day. Maybe your life path number. is titled Timing and Intentions. The next solstice or equinox will bring an important shift for us. 
It says to draw another card to get ideas into what that shift may be. Ah. Maybe with the new moon coming in November. Something is approaching. Something is coming your way. Something important that God wants you to see, wants you to know. If you're listening to this message, this video, it's meant for you to listen to it because there's something you need to know that's coming so that you won't miss it. And what is the next card out? Represented by the number eight. Oh, did I show that card? Maybe your birthday just passed. You were born in August. Maybe the eighth of the month is your birthday. Eight days, eight weeks. Soon come. The, the title of this card is Communication. So what is coming is based on communication, a message. This video is a message, <laughs> but maybe someone's bringing you a message that you've been waiting for, something you wanna hear, that you've been longing to find out. Words have hurt you in the past, and that's why you fear talking to someone. If I read it in the first part, as the car says, because I'm reading it as if I'm giving you the message, what the car actually says is, words have hurt me in the past. And that's why I fear talking to you. Okay, well, if you're watching, this message is for you not from you. So this is a message for you. Communication from the gods, from the spirit. There's someone out there who wants to speak to you, but they're afraid. And why are they afraid? Because in their past, they've been hurt by words, possibly your words, speaking too strong. They're intimidated by your aggressive nature. Or you said something to them that was hurtful, whether truthful or not. Because I'm not saying that it was not truthful if you spoke your truth, and it is your truth, and they felt hurt by your truth, it is what it is. But because of that, they're afraid to come and talk to you. Because they're afraid that what you have to say in response to whatever they have to say to you is going to be hurtful to them. Maybe they've been hurt by the words of another. Maybe this person is used to being hurt every time they open their mouth to speak their truth. Somebody's waiting to cut them down. Maybe as a child they were told to constantly be quiet. Children are meant to be seen or heard. We know that old, old outdated saying. What happens in this house, stays in this house. So they never were able to say what they really said. Oh, they were never able to say what they really wanted to say from their heart, either to a parent, another loved one before you. They're afraid to talk now because they believe their words are always ill-received. 
Okay, Spirit, let's get more. Are they afraid to talk to my collective watching? <laughs> or these... Or did it come from someone in their past before the viewer? A prior relationship? A parental relationship? We have the number eight again, twice on the board. You could be a Leo. You could be a Leo. You could be a Virgo. You could be a fire sign. Aries, Leo, who's the other fire sign? Aries, Leo, oh my God. There's none of the fire sign. If you're a fire sign, it's you, sorry. But we have eight here twice, 88. This card is titled Mirrors. You're projecting your own fears and limitations onto me. Go within to understand that you are seeing yourself, not me. Okay, this can be seen two ways. Either you are saying that this relationship that you are no longer in currently at this moment the reasons why you are not able to receive communication from this person, your person, is because their own fears about communicating with you because of something that's happened in their past is based on their own limitation. And they are feeling the need to play victim and project it onto you. And that is why you won't receive it. And that's why you speak your peace. And that's why you stand on your ground. Because they are not a victim. And like you speak, they should be able to speak. And you will not receive them as a victim. And you will not take accountability for their past hurts. Because that wasn't you. Or... Your person is saying that because of your past hurts, you tended to come off too aggressive, not trusting, always limiting their voice. Maybe someone in the past verbally abused you. So you said no one else would be able to speak to you ever in that way. And you didn't allow them to speak and you would not listen. And they're saying this is why they've walked away. This is why they can't receive your communication. This is why they've blocked you out of their lives. Because you're so caught up in what you won't have that you don't know what you had. that you saw them as everyone else around you instead of who they were. Because you know that in your lacking of confidence and aggression, that they were too confident and too aggressive, that you want them to dumb, dub down themselves in order to stand with you. And they refuse to be that. And so it was too much. You played the blame game. And they walked away. But they need more. They need someone stronger. Someone not so easily intimidated. Not so weak. Not caught up in their own. So whichever one you are, take it how it resonates. We have another time and intention cards. Divine timing and intentions. We have the number two here. Life path two, second of the month, Pisces energy. 
water sign born on the second of a month february aquarius energy now pisces the spices does Pisces start at the end of February? Well, we know Aquarius starts, <laughs> goes into February. And then I believe, yes, Pisces is near the end. There are, sub, there are subconscious fears affecting our ability to attract love and abundance. The universe is helping us to make them conscious so we can easily attract what we want including each other. If you are in separation right now, the universe is the reason you are not together. Divine timing is the re sorry, there's a fruit flying here. Whew. The universe has caused this connection to separate. It's unhealthy. It's not reciprocal. One is up when one is down. One is over here, one is there, one is in when one is out. Whatever the reason, there was no balance in it. One was causing pain when the other was taking. One was putting fear and doubt in the head of that. And one was trying to make it work. And the universe said, you know what? Maybe you do belong together. But if not right now, you cannot. You're killing each other's spirit. You're breaking down that which was meant to be whole. Because in your earthly bodies, something is you're not connecting as you should. So I'm going to put you over here, put you over there. See how you grow separately. See if either of you earn this. See if I will allow you to come back together. It says subconscious fear. Fear. One or both. Living in the fear of the past, can't get out of it, stuck in that old energy, carrying loads of baggage, bringing down the other, bringing down this relationship that was meant to be divine. God said, no, beloved, this is not what it was supposed to be. This is not, no, no, mm-mm. Clean out your yards. Build yourselves up. Vibrate higher. Earn it. And if you both do the job, do the work, or one, whichever, whoever caused the ending in this connection, if not both, we know it takes two. Because even when we think we do the best and do the most, if it's not felt by the other, is it really the most and the best? Or are we basing on how we feel about how we perform? And not asking, baby, what do you need? What do you want? Am I giving you everything you desire? Can I do more? Am I meeting your expectations? What can I offer you? I see you're down. How do I lift you up? How do I make this? Everything we need it to be. If both are not doing that, then surely both are the reason why it's split. Even when one is more than the other, both were not giving everything. The universe is helping you to let go of that fear Helping you to let go of the past. 
helping you to attract what you truly want, including each other, by learning that there's more fear in you being apart from your beloved than being together. So we know God is the reason this unit, this union is no longer a union at the moment. You can stop blaming others. You can stop blaming the unit, the, you can stop blaming friends and family. You can stop blaming yourselves. Because you are not perfect. You make mistakes. God knows that. Stop blaming yourself. You didn't do your best. Now you know. Now you know what you need to do. And you know how you need to do it. For each other. You know what each other needs, wants, accepts, and won't accept. Now you know. Because you've gone through the experience. You've gone through the turmoil and chaos. And now you can see in separation, your vision, you're awake and you see the mistakes that were made. And if this is what you truly want, you know now what it takes. It doesn't matter who or what. God says, I separated you for the betterment of you both. I allow others in because I was testing your resolve. I allow toxicity. I allow pain. I allow frustration. I allow cheating as an option because I was testing your resolve. How bad did you want it? And now that you've done what you've done, the cause it to no longer be, it is what it is, beloved. But God said, as you still breathe, as you still know, as you choose to believe, now it's time to do the work. Men's heal, nurture, nourish yourself, get back into yourself. Realize that the path serves you not well, for it is full of nothingness and illusions of what was that no longer is. Learn to move on. Learn to accept your faults as gifts of change. Seeds that can now be replanted to grow a new foundation of love and hope and joy and abundance. This card says abundance, abundance of love awaits you in this connection or the next because now you know how to grow and to your higher self. Next card out is number six. And it is titled Karmic Ties. What did I just speak about? You might be cancer. Six month days one. Born on the six, six might be your life path number. Mmm. Karmic ties. I see blue in this card. I'm getting a masculine, high masculine energy. In heavy thought. Contemplating, reevaluating, staying alone in thought, 
I know I need to release attachments with karmic people. I'm creating a plan to leave him or her. <clears throat> now, in the last reading, I mentioned one of the cards that jumped out said, I am not available. And now you know why. I also mentioned that it possibly was because they're still living in the karmic connection they built when they left you. When they cheated on you. When he walked away from you. He meaning she and her masculine energy or him physically a man. <clears throat> As I was writing my prediction, they're still with this person. They're still connected to this toxic karmic connection. But they say they are creating a plan to leave. They don't want to be there. They know they are not you. You are the one. See this couple? Two. See these two people? You and him? Him and you? Her and you? As this man sits alone without her, she is gone. She is you. But the new she is not you. The new she is a karmic. They said themselves, the universe is letting you know. They're in a karmic connection. You were the one. They didn't believe. They were stuck in the past, stuck in their head, not knowing how to communicate, afraid of you. Afraid to look in the mirror and see who they really were. But Divine says this new moon, this new shift we're about to make when we come out of Libra season and move into Scorpio. Mm, our kings, our king of wands, our emperors, our Scorpios, our strong, resilient. Energies. The go-getters, the fighters, the thinkers, they're ready to move out of this karmic connection because they want what they had. They know that they did wrong and the universe and God stepped in and said, no, you will not treat my beloved child like this. This karmic connection they're in is why you're not together. This person existed before you walked away. Why, they're why you walked away, beloved. but your person is still in it. The universe is letting you know, communicating with you, sending you the message that if you're thinking about returning, reaching out, reevaluating, rethinking and reconsidering, going back, it is not time. It is not time. They are not done. It is not over. You are not being exalted. You have not yet been chosen to be the one. And you are not second to none. You're meant to be first, a queen. Not a concubine, not a side piece, not a second choice, not an option. Keep walking, keep healing, 
keep growing. As I said in the first reading, they're not available. They can't give you everything you need and desire at this time. They've not yet fully grown up or healed or elevated. If they're still in this connection and they know it's karmic, they know it's karmic. The universe is telling you they know. And they also know who you are. And this is why they want you. Because you are not karmic, you are divine. You are a empress, a queen of cups, a queen of wands, desirable, beautiful, nurturing, giving. You speak the truth strongly. Yes. You will not dim your light for anyone, as you should not. Because true masculine loves how bright you shine. Loves your confident nature. Loves your strength. And gives you a place in the kingdom as a queen who speaks and commands and manifests. God doesn't send you the weak or the meek. God sends you what, that which is whole and abundant and able and not fearful. Confident about who you are and why you've been sent their way. Yes, they miss you. Yes, they know who you are. Yes, they want you. Yes, they're regretful, but they're still stuck in where they were when you left them. They haven't moved. They haven't learned. They haven't given up anything for you. That's why they're not coming your way. They can't. This karmic is in the ass 24-7, watching and waiting to see, possibly know about you, of you, how they feel about you. And they're stuck. You're not making a plan. But they're making a plan without you. They're not asking for your input or how you feel about it. They're just going to make a plan and walk right back in and, and expect you to understand why they took so long. Why they second guessed this union. Who's bro, that's too many. We did get one and fell out first. I Man, I should take it. <laughs> The number six, we have six twice here and eight twice here. 66, six being the number of the ancestors. True spirit. What do they want you to know? We have another card of communication. Please contact me. I may not respond, but knowing you care opens my heart. Are they kidding? Are they kidding, beloved? I don't know if you're laughing, but I'm laughing inside. They want you to reach out and contact them. But they may not respond. They just want to know that you still care. What about what you need? Why would you contact them if they're the ones still cheating? Are they that selfish, that greedy? Truly, they are also a karmic. And, and they are exactly where they need to be, with another karmic, away from you. Con 
contact them so they know you care, but they may not answer you when you contact them. Who do they think you are? Global, weak, wallowing in your tears while they lay in another's bed? That is not you. Right, beloved? Hell no. Don't call them. Don't reach out. Don't send a letter. Don't tell a friend. Just don't move. They don't deserve to hear from you. I'm getting true narcissism energy here. True narcissism. You see how she hides in the shadow behind him? That's how he wants you to be. Hidden. A secret. A secret that only he has access to. He wants to be a secret. As my earlier video was called. Let me see. What was the name of that deck? The Hidden Truth. That was the oracle deck I used in the last reading. He wants to keep you hidden until everything is okay in his world. So he's finished doing what he's doing and cleans up his own trash. And you are not to be hidden because your light shines and others see you as beautiful and worthy and you are desired by many. And he knows it, or she knows it. And they don't want you to be out there available to others. They want to keep you trapped for their own use. Don't be that. Don't be fooled. Don't be used. Don't be, don't contact them. Don't unblock them. Don't reach out. Keep moving and do you. Keep healing. Travel even. Explore the world. Get away. Refocus and regenerate. And watch who walks into your life. Mm. Universe will send you an abundance of love. In abundance, time and intentions. The universe is helping. So you can easily attract what you want. Who cares if they miss you? Who cares if they miss you? Let's both stop running away. Both stop running away? Run. They're not running away. They're taking their time. They're enjoying the spoils of another relationship. Keep running. Keep moving. Keep pushing on. Keep elevating. Keep being beautiful you. Keep being desirable. Wanted, remembered. Since they like to remember the past and they like to, ca yeah, you be part of that. There's better waiting for you, beloved. Don't you settle. Don't you settle for being second. Don't you settle for waiting to be picked or chosen. All these cards fell out at once. We have romantic messages from your counterpart. I've never felt love like this before. The depths of it can be inspiring, but also overwhelming. I think you're beautiful inside and out, like I said. I see the light that radiates from your soul, like I said. You a star, baby, you a star. Shine. 
But here's another message about the karmic tie they're in. I'm feeling controlled by people around me and I don't like it. It's pushing me to find my power again. Good luck to them. Good luck. Wish them well. Wish them all the luck in the world. That they finally find out who they are and what they really want. That they get out of letting people use them as a tool. That they learn to stand on their own two feet. That they stop being a crutch or needing a crutch. That they stop trauma bonding. In the meantime, you do you, boo. You live better and be better and show them that you will not settle and you will not wait. But you do forgive for you know that they are stuck in less than, accepted less than they deserve, for they deserve to you. But they chose karmic connections. Because they walk in their karmic energy. And you could not be privy to that a second longer. Wish them well as you walk on. Bye. We have a mission card. The number one. Which represents completion. You're born in January. Maybe you're a Capricorn. Hey, my Capricorns. <laughs> If this is resonating with you and you're a Capricorn or on the cusp of Sagittarius, or on the cusp of Aquarius, I'm beginning to focus on my mission and our part and our connection is part of that. Okay, well, their final mission, their final wish, their final desire at the end of all this mess that they're in, that they conjured, that they're settling for, is to get you back. They believe that at the end of all this, after they've done all they want to do and partake of all they want to partake of, that you're going to be waiting on the, at the end of the road. Like a tree planted in the ground that can't move. They don't know that while they fuck you there, you grew roots. Strong. You learn to balance yourself. And now you've uprooted yourself. And the fruit that grows from your mighty vines. It's delicious and it nurtures you and you feed yourself. And you planted yourself on a new path. And when they return looking for you, they will not find you where they left you. For the winds of time have blown you in a new direction. Because you listened. And you listened enough for God to say, get up. Get up. You're stronger than you know. Get up. And move. And you did. And it is well with your soul. And you're finding happiness and peace. Alone. And surely all you've manifested... And all the seeds you've sown in the season of loneliness. You did it by yourself. Do they deserve to come and partake of your bountiful harvest in the new season? When they're finished and they dusted themselves off and polished themselves to look shiny and new? Will you forget? Even though you've forgiven yourself and them and wish them well, wherever they may be, will you forget that you were left to heal alone, to cry alone, 
to feed yourself and your heart and your own spirit. Just you and God. You and your ancestors. You and nothingness emerged full of everything. Everything that someone deserves. Will you forget and allow them to just walk back in with a, I'm sorry, shoulda, woulda, coulda, but didn't? Don't forget. Don't forget. Let the experience grow you, change you, make a better you. And on the bottom of the deck, we have the number five. If that number resonates with you in any way, your birth month, the day you're born on, your life path number, there's a lesson, like I said, this card is messages about trust and truth from the divine, from your spirit guides, from, the, from your higher self, from what they know is in here, but they're not saying it, but they know. There's a lesson to be learned from this. Surely there is by both parties. And just like you learned your lesson, they're learning theirs. But what would the lesson be at the end of the day? What will you have learned? Will action show you? Will your action show who you are? Will your actions show your real self? Or will your actions be one of hmm Spirit says <laughs> No beloved don't say that. So I won't say what I was thinking. Let me change it up and make it positive. <laughs> For the karmic in this connection, the karmic half, will your actions be one of continued deception? Will you walk in polished with lies only to gain and not to give? of the truth? Will you not be worthy of trust? Will you think that God will not see how you come? Are you expecting to have what you had? That this person has not been renewed in your absence? Will you even see what you're really walking into? And for my righteous part of this connection, will your actions be one of someone who deserves more, who deserves better, who deserves the forgiveness of God, who deserves their new seeds to grow in bounty, who deserves to attract love and abundance. Who deserves to continue to shine. Who, who knows that if you wait, only good can come. Which one are you? Which one of these are you? Choose well, choose truthfully. Because God has already made the final decision. Whether you see it or not, it has already been done. It's already written in stone. It will manifest. 
no matter what you do. So you know, you better know that you know that you know that you are not God. And you do not have the final say. The final say manifests in the way you move in here. Not behind closed doors, but for all the world to see. Your truth worn on your sleeve, on your chest. On your lips. You speak it. You live it. You breathe it. You move in it. You do it. You give it. That is how you manifest. Your true soulmate. That twin flame energy. That's how you get back that which you lost. Intentionally. I see a divine one, a chosen one, an empath who fell into the arms of the devil. A narcissistic, egotistical, selfish, greedy individual. Which are you? You can't be both. Each will manifest exactly what they are. You could tell by how you're currently living. If you're with a karmic, you are a karmic. You are the devil to this connection. Toxic in every way. And if you have walked away in your solitude and you are alone, building, repairing, renewing, Connecting with whether you found newness or not. That is what you are and that is what you will have, beloved. Divine timing, the wheels are turning in your favor. And in this next season, November, new moon, New Mercury, new Veshwe. Whatever you believe in, you will have exactly what you've put out into the universe. Love and light, forgiveness and resolve, strength and resilience. Perseverance because you believe and you walk in blind faith. When they went low, you went high. And God saw you. He saw you. He heard you. He watched you. Night after night after night. In pain. And your blessings soon come. And for your counterpart, don't be resentful. Don't be bitter. Don't be angry. Forgive. They're not you. Forgive. They're not the image you see in the mirror. And it's okay if it was cloudy, now it's clean and clear and crystal. And you see with new eyes. So forgive. Wish them well. Pray for them when you pray. That they find their way. A healing like no other. That they can finally free themselves and become free as you have. I say, I say, we thank God for these messages of confirmation and clarification. We thank God for giving us knowledge and wisdom and foresight as to what is to come and what is. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for coming again to my channel. 
Thank you for listening to your mystic journey divine. I love you. I see you. I respect you. I hear you. I feel your energy as they guide my readings. I pray for you as I pray for myself. If you need to reach me for closer assistance, my information is in the description box below. I have created my own line of Oracle cards that are available to enhance your reading, to give you wisdom and foresight into what is and what will come. That link is also in the description box. Check it out. Readers, if you'd like to use them in your readings. And if you are new to the channel and this message has resonated with you and you feel it's a place you'd like to come again and hear more messages about all areas of life, please hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you will not miss a video. Please hit the like button if nothing else as you can support this channel for free and I appreciate you. Let me know that you appreciate me. <laughs> On this beautiful Friday afternoon, I wish you well as you walk into the weekend. I wish you continue healing and continue growth and continue peace in all you choose to see. For as within, so without, and as above, so below. Until we meet again, beloved. I say.